step into the mystery of the Philistines. They've baffled history as ancient adversaries, mentioned from Abraham to David in the Bible. These tales of conflict are legendary. Today, we're exploring their origins and the heroic battles they fought against Israel's champions. The Philistines were a really old group of people who lived on the south coast of Canaan a very long time ago. Canaan is a place that is mentioned a lot in old stories. The Philistines lived during the Iron Age, and they had a group of cities together known as Philistia. A long time ago, around 1175 BC, the Philistines came from a place called the Aegean and settled in Canaan during a time when a lot of things were falling apart, known as the Late Bronze Age Collapse. They mixed with the people already living there, but they also kept their own special way of doing things. In 604 BC, the Philistine group, controlled by the Neo-Assyrian Empire for a very long time, was completely wiped out by a king named Nebuchadnezzar II from another empire called the Neo-Babylonian Empire. After that, the Philistines became part of Nebuchadnezzar's empire and later the Persian Empire. They lost their identity and vanished as a group of people by around the late 5th century BC. The Philistines are most famous for having conflicts with other groups in the Canaan area, especially the Israelites. Most of what we know about the Philistines comes from an old book called the Hebrew Bible. But we can also see pictures of them on the walls of a temple called the Temple of Ramesses III at Medinet Habu, where they are called Peleset. The Assyrians also had names for them, like Palastu or Pilisti. And even though they disappeared a long time ago, we can still find things they made that are different from what other people made back then. Origin of Philistines In ancient times, during the late Bronze Age collapse, a group of seafarers called the Sea Peoples attacked places like Egypt and the Eastern Mediterranean. Their origins are a bit of a puzzle, but most agree they came from Southern Europe and West Asia, including areas like Western Asia Minor, the Aegean, and the East Mediterranean Islands. The Sea Peoples tried invading Egypt multiple times, with one notable battle called the Battle of the Delta around 1175 BC, where the pharaoh Ramesses III defeated them. These Sea Peoples included a group called the PRSTJ, possibly Peleset or Polasti. After defeating the Sea Peoples, Ramesses III supposedly moved some of the PRSTJ to southern Canaan, as mentioned in inscriptions. Despite attempts to find evidence of their settlement during that time, archaeologists haven't found any. But some scholars link the Porestia with the Philistines due to their Aegean connections and the name Peleset Pulasti. Philistine artifacts started appearing in Canaan by the 12th century BC. Their pottery has been found in places like the Jezreel Valley, indicating their presence even beyond what became Philistia. However, it seems their influence in these areas might not have been as strong, and they might have assimilated into the local population by the 10th century BC. Interestingly, there's little evidence that the Sea Peoples took over the southern Levant forcefully. Cities like Ashdod, Ashkelon, Gath, and Ekron, which later became the core of Philistine territory, show no signs of major destruction. Even Afek, where an Egyptian garrison was destroyed at the end of the 13th century, saw a peaceful introduction of Philistine pottery afterward. Moreover, places like Tel Kaysen, Akko, Tel Abu Hawam, Tel Dor, Tel Mivarak, Tel Zeror, Tel Michal, Tel Gerisa, and Tel Batash show no signs of destruction around 1200 BC. By Iron Age II, the Philistines formed an ethnic state with five main cities, Gaza, Ashdod, Ashkelon, Ekron, and Gath. According to the old Hebrew texts, there were conflicts between the Philistines and the Israelites during the Judges period. Allegedly, the Philistines ruled over Israel during the days of Saul and Samuel, prohibiting the Israelites from making iron weapons. The narratives also claim that David subjugated the Philistines, but scholars debate the accuracy of these stories. After the United Monarchy dissolved, references to the Philistines became sparse in historical accounts. In the mid-8th century BC, the Philistines faced a significant turning point when Tiglath-Pileser III of the Neo-Assyrian Empire conquered much of the Levant. Philistia, which was already under Assyrian rule, became part of the empire. Despite this, 
The kings of the five Philistine cities, including Iamani, continued to rule as Assyrian vassals. Iamani attempted an unsuccessful rebellion against Assyria in 712 BC with Egyptian support, leading to Philistia's effective annexation by Assyria. Sargon II, in 711 BC, specifically highlighted the capture of Gath in his annals. A decade later, under Sennacherib, Egypt encouraged a rebellion against Assyria, resulting in revolts in Ashkelon, Ekron, Judah, and Sidon. Sennacherib crushed the rebellion, devastating cities in southern Aramea, Phoenicia, Philistia, and Judah. Jerusalem, though not captured, paid tribute. As punishment, the rebel nations, including Ashdod, Ashkelon, Gaza, and Ekron, paid tribute to Assyria. Gath's absence in the tribute list suggests Sargon II may have destroyed it earlier. In 609 BC, the Egyptians occupied the Philistines, and in 604-603 BC, Nebuchadnezzar II of Babylon took control, destroying Ashkelon, Gaza, Afek, and Ekron. Despite seeking Egyptian aid, the Philistine kings were ignored. Subsequently, the Philistines became vassals to the Babylonians and later the Persians, losing their unique identity by the late 5th century BC. Ashdod residents reportedly kept their language, possibly an Aramaic dialect. Archaeological evidence confirming the origin of Philistines. For over 3,000 years, the ancient Philistines have had a not-so-good reputation. Even today, people use the term Philistine to describe someone lacking culture or smarts. Due to their history of violent raids, the Philistines aren't seen in a positive light. The first mentions of the Philistines come from carvings and writings in Egypt's Valley of the Kings. These ancient records show them as part of the Sea Peoples, known for invading eastern Mediterranean cities. But this image of the Philistines is incomplete. Since there are no surviving texts in their language, researchers use archaeological discoveries and writings from other cultures. Through extensive investigations and collaboration among Levant specialists, we now fully understand the Philistine people. How the socio-political climate influenced the Philistines' image in history. Back in the Bronze Age collapse, the eastern Mediterranean was a bit of a mess. Different groups were fighting for control, including Egyptians, Israelites, Canaanites, and the Sea Peoples. Historical accounts and archaeological finds tell us about these conflicts. Some researchers think that the Philistines and Israelites arrived in the southern Levant around the same time. This meant they became natural rivals during this chaotic political period. The Merneptah Stele in Egypt's Valley of the Kings supports this idea. It has inscriptions from Merneptah, who ruled Egypt from 1213 BCE to 1203 BCE, exactly when the Bronze Age collapse happened. Merneptah was busy leading military campaigns against those challenging Egypt's power, including the Sea Peoples. The Merneptah Stele describes these battles and holds the earliest known Egyptian record mentioning Israelites. While we have proof that the Philistines settled in the southern Levant around Merneptah's time, the challenge is there are no surviving Philistine documents. So researchers find it tricky to put together a complete story of their political relationships. Samson and the Philistines. Around the 12th century BCE, during the time of the Sea People's invasion, the Philistines were gaining power. They took over the Israelite city of Gezer and became strong rulers over the Israelites. This period of oppression lasted for about 40 years, as mentioned in the Book of Judges. And the children of Israel again did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Philistines 40 years. Judges 13.1 To free Israel, God raised up Samson, known for his incredible strength from the tribe of Dan. The story of Samson includes some intriguing archaeological connections. In Judges 14, it's mentioned that Samson killed a lion with his bare hands while heading to the Philistine city of Timnath. Near this location in Beth Shemesh, archaeologists found a small stone seal from Samson's time. It shows a man with a lion, leading to speculation that it represents Samson's fight with the lion. As Samson's life progressed, he was lured by Delilah, who tricked him into revealing the secret of his strength, his hair. When his hair was cut, 
he lost his God-given strength, was captured, and became a slave to the Philistines. They made a spectacle of him. During a celebration in a temple dedicated to the god Dagon, Samson, now blind, prayed for strength. He was led to the temple's central pillars by a young boy, and with a surge of strength, brought the pillars down causing the temple and the revealing Philistines inside to collapse. Similar to the construction described in the Samson story, the temple with two central pillars has been discovered in the Philistine city of Gath, modern Tel Es Safi, and Tel Kasili, a Philistine port city. This design appears to have been a known element in Philistine temples, allowing a tall man like Samson to spread himself between the pillars. Samson, in various struggles, personally defeated thousands of Philistines. Some theories suggest that Samson might have inspired the legendary Greek strongman Hercules. Both figures shared similar feats, like killing a lion with their bare hands and meeting their demise through a lover, Judges 517. It's speculated that the Greek legend may have been passed down through the Philistines' Greek Aegean descendants, or Samson's seafaring Danite tribe. Moving forward in biblical history, the Philistines faced the Israelites in a large-scale battle during the time of a young Samuel. The Philistines won a stunning victory, slaughtering about 34,000 Israelites. 1 Samuel 4, 3, 10. Adding insult to injury, they captured the Ark of the Covenant as a war trophy. However, when they brought it to Philistine territory, trouble ensued. Placing the ark before their god, Dagon, they found the idol prostrated before it the next morning. When they set Dagon upright again, the idol was discovered smashed the following morning. Additionally, a deadly plague struck wherever the ark was taken. Eventually, the Philistines returned the ark to the Israelites. In an attempt to conquer the Israelites again, their army was annihilated during a fierce thunderstorm, 1 Samuel 7.10. Many battles followed during King Saul's reign, David and Goliath. One of the most famous encounters with the Philistines is the legendary battle between David, a small young underdog, and the towering giant, Goliath. The Philistines gathered at the Valley of Elah, and Goliath, their champion, challenged the Israelite forces to one-on-one -on -one combat to determine the subservient nation. David, with his sling, killed Goliath and beheaded him. The Israelites then pursued and slaughtered the fleeing Philistine army. Archaeology contributes to this account, with the discovery of a fortress believed to be the base for the Israelite forces during the battle. While no remains of Goliath have been found, inscribed names on pottery from the site, like Alwat and Wolt, show linguistic links to Goliath, confirming Indo-European roots and the distant Mediterranean origins of the Philistine people. Goliath's hometown, Gath, had a massive city wall and a large entry gate, discovered during excavations in 2016. While fleeing from Saul, David sought refuge incognito in Gath, feigning madness at the city gate, possibly the one found at Tel Asafi, to escape with his life. Gath is also mentioned in 2 Samuel 21:15-22 as the home to four other giants conquered by the Israelites during David's time. No evidence found. The biblical account suggests that the Philistines originated from Crete, but there's no supporting evidence from Crete itself. The lack of surviving documents in the Philistine language and limited knowledge about their native religion make tracing their origins challenging. Excavations in the Philistine Pentapolis since the 1990s have provided insights into the Philistines' cultural diversity. Early settlements revealed pottery styles from Anatolia, Cyprus, Greece, and Crete, indicating a blend of several Eastern Mediterranean cultures. As settlements progressed, evidence showed the Philistines merging different cultural styles, exemplified by a 9th century BCE altar combining Cyprus and Aegean traditions. This challenges the perception of the Philistines as culturally unrefined, highlighting their appreciation for artistic traditions. The absence of written records and Philistine documents necessitates reliance on archaeological finds to reconstruct their enigmatic culture's origins. While many questions persist, 
Evidence suggests the Philistine people comprise diverse Eastern Mediterranean cultures, gradually assimilating into the Southern Levant. Some researchers propose that the Philistines were a multi-ethnic group of migrating peoples who evolved into opportunistic pirate tribes akin to 17th century CE Atlantic pirates. This theory aligns with the varied cultural styles found in Philistine settlements and their historical portrayal as unsavory and threatening individuals. Bible about Philistines The Philistines make their earliest biblical appearance in the Table of Nations, a list of 70 nations traced back to Noah's descendants, Genesis 10:14. Their roots are believed to stretch back to Kaftor, the Hebrew designation for the island of Crete and the broader Aegean region, as indicated in Amos 9-7 and Jeremiah 47-4. Somewhat mysteriously, the Philistines underwent a migration from this area to the Mediterranean coast near Gaza. Their nautical expertise earned them association with the historical entities known as the Sea Peoples. Early scriptural accounts reveal interactions between the Philistines and both Abraham and Isaac around 2000 BC. Genesis 21-32-34, 26 to 1, 8. Post the incidents involving Isaac and the Philistines, Genesis 26, 18. The book of Exodus briefly alludes to them after the Israelites' crossing of the Red Sea. The narrative states, When Pharaoh let the people go, God did not lead them on the road through the Philistine country, though that was shorter. For God said, If they face war, they might change their minds and return to Egypt. Exodus 13:17. The road through the Philistine country refers to what would later be identified as the Via Maris, or the Way of the Sea, a crucial ancient trade route in Israel. This coastal pathway linked the Nile Delta with Canaan, Syria, and further into the Mesopotamian region of Southwest Asia. Around the 13th century BC, a pivotal period during the days of Samuel and Samson, the Philistines shifted their focus from the coastal areas of Canaan and ventured inland, establishing their civilization in five principal cities, Gaza, Ashkelon, Ashdod, Gath, and Ekron. The Philistines underwent a significant transformation, Joshua 13.3. Each of these cities was governed by a king or lord, using the Hebrew term seren, also interpreted as tyrant. These kings formed a cooperative coalition of equals, wherein they maintained autonomous control over their respective cities. This is evident in instances such as Akish, the king of Gath, dealing with David, 1 Samuel 27, 5-7. However, during times of national crisis, they collaborated for collective security, Judges 16, 5. From the outset, the Philistines had a significant role in the biblical narrative, either standing as allies or formidable foes of God's people. Their influence reached pivotal moments in the lives of key figures such as Samson, Judges 13:1, 14:1, Samuel, 1 Samuel 4:1, Saul, 1 Samuel 13:4, and David, 1 Samuel 17:23. A distinctive aspect of the Philistines was their mastery of iron, a material superior to the bronze wielded by the Israelites. Even during Saul's reign around 1050, 1010 BC, the Israelites had to turn to the Philistines to sharpen and repair their iron tools. 1 Samuel 13:19-21. With their advanced weaponry and aggressive military stance, the Philistines consistently hindered Israel's progress as a nation. For nearly two centuries, they oppressed and harassed the Israelites, frequently encroaching upon their territory. The Israelites struggled against the overwhelming military might of the Philistines until Samuel and later David, guided by God, achieved victories over them. 1 Samuel 7, 12-14 2 Samuel 5, 25 The Philistines' religious practices involved the worship of three gods, Ashtoreth, Dagon, and Baal Zebub, each with shrines in various cities. Judges 16:23, 1 Samuel 31:10, Seun Kings 1:2. Archaeological findings reveal that Philistine soldiers carried images of these gods into battle. 2 Samuel 5:21. Additionally, they displayed superstition, as seen in their respect for the power of Israel's Ark of the Covenant. 1 Samuel 5:1-12. 
The Philistines were notorious for their involvement in the production and consumption of alcoholic beverages, particularly beer. Ancient Philistine ruins unveil numerous breweries, wineries, and an abundance of beer mugs and drinking vessels. The week-long drinking party at Samson's wedding feast, as recounted in Judges 14.10, mirrors the Philistine tradition of miste, translated as a drinking feast. The Israelites commonly referred to the Philistines as uncircumcised, implying their lack of a relationship with God, Judges 15.18, 1 Samuel 14.6, 2 Samuel 1.20. The term signified that they were not part of God's chosen people and were to be avoided as a contaminating evil. In contemporary language, the term Philistine is used to describe an unrefined, dull person. However, historical Philistines were far from unsophisticated. They were advanced seafaring people who, for generations, surpassed Israel in various aspects. While there are minimal prophetic references to the Philistines in the Old Testament, Jeremiah chapter 47 stands as an exception. Eventually, the Philistines assimilated into Canaanite culture, fading from both biblical records and history. Their legacy lives on through the name Palestine, a lasting testament to their existence. What does DNA tell us about the Philistines? To get over the mysteries of the Philistines' origins, ancient DNA recovered from their cemeteries has provided insightful clues. Contrary to prior beliefs of a singular Eastern Mediterranean genetic lineage, the DNA from early burials surprisingly revealed a significant presence of Southern European genetic ancestry. A closer examination of later Philistine burials indicated a gradual decline in the concentration of Southern European DNA. Within a mere 200 years, the Philistines exhibited genetic profiles strikingly similar to the local population, suggesting swift genetic assimilation through intermarriage with the locals during the early settlement period. This challenges previous notions of contentious relationships between the Philistines and Levantines. Despite the rapid intermarriage implied by DNA evidence, some researchers argue that the Philistines maintained a distinct cultural identity even after mingling with the Levantines. This is evidenced by the coexistence of Levantine and Philistine funerary and pottery traditions persisting long after their settlement. In the biblical narrative, Jeremiah 47 stands as one of the last references to the Philistines, prophesying their destruction by a force from the north. Historical records align with this prophecy, as the Babylonian king Nebuchadnezzar, during the destruction of the southern kingdom of Judah around 605 BCE, also conquered Philistine lands. Although Nehemiah 13.23 hints at the survival of some Philistines from Ashdod, their fate remains shrouded in mystery. Ironically, while the people themselves faded into obscurity, a controversial vestige endured the territorial name, Palestine. Traced back to the Philistines, the term was first used to describe the entire Holy Land in the 5th century BCE by the Greek historian Herodotus. The name persisted through Roman times, adopted officially in the 2nd century CE as a means to sever the Jewish connection to the land after crushing the Bar Kokhba revolt. In the present day, the legacy of conflict endures between Palestinians and Israelites, even though today's Palestinians are not direct descendants of the Philistines. The territory once belonging to the Western Philistine state is now the independently controlled Palestinian territory, still preserving the name of one of the chief Philistine cities, Gaza. Though faded, the historical echoes of the Philistines persist in the ongoing complexities of the region. So what do you think of the mysterious origins of the Philistines? Comment below and subscribe for more.